live. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you so much for coming on my little show. I know you're a busy guy, <laughs> but I felt like I needed to reach out to you, and obviously you got back to me, so that's great. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing well, and thanks for having me. And again, not, not a big deal. Look, I've done everything from uh, junior high schools. In fact, I just did a, a high school uh, 15 minutes ago in uh in east east of los angeles and i've also done major networks so no i'm never going to be one of those people that'd be like ah oh, you're too small i'm never going to talk to you <laughs> it's like, no it's like no. why do my show when you can be on tinfoil hats right you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i mean there's there's all sorts of stuff look it, it, it go getting that's part of what i do i mean i try to talk to as many people as possible and uh if i have the time by god i'm gonna do it right on so, Mark, this is a question that I ask everybody who comes on the show. Mm -hmm. Who is Mark Sargent? <laughs> you don't ask everybody who, who is Mark Sargent because a lot of people... Not Mark know. Sargent. Nah. Who they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, that's really flattering that you would ask everybody that. Um, no, I'm just... Well, officially, I'm the uh, freshman recruiter for a metaphorical place called Flat Earth University which is scattered across the internet um that's it's basically him i'm i'm uh, a nice guy who started his career in playing video games for a living believe it or not uh, back in the 90s and then got into proprietary tech support and was really naive I grew up on a on a really rural island north of seattle where you know they you know at night they roll up the sidewalks and shut up shut the lights off and when I got into conspiracies, I just kind of, I had an opinion on it. It was like, wow, there's some really interesting stuff out there. You know, stuff that you're not going to see on the news. And then when I got into this, all the other conspiracies became second, second rate, you know, second tier. But yeah, that's, that's really what I am. I, this is what I do now, 24 seven. This is, this is, I get up every morning and and look at the new the world news and look at the flatter <laughs> stories and try to analyze what's going on and spread the word that's what i do right on so you know the, again i'm going on record to say this i'm not a journalist i'm not here to attack you i'm not here to debate you yeah. i like i this isn't a conspiracy podcast either you know <laughs> this is a this is a podcast about different it's going to be an archive for me about different weird things that i'm into but i love conspiracies right so sure. before we get into it i just you know full disclaimer i am biased towards it i've listened to all you know i've listened to podcasts you've been on i've looked at the videos uh i think what's that guy's name dubay i watched that yeah, video Eric when dubay. it was first yeah. out yeah. uh I, i've seen it i've seen it all and again last week i did an episode on hollow earth you know what i mean i like that idea as well because it blows my mind that we want to colonize other planets if they're even real. And we'll get into that Yeah. Uh, without facing. We don't even know what's at the bottom of our oceans. We don't even know what happens in a one by one square of soil. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Let alone that we want to go and colonize other planets. So uh, I think it's perfect that yesterday I went to I'm in Florida. Mm -hmm. I went to Kennedy Space Center. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. And I know what I like about the flat Earth uh, model and the theory or hypothesis, whatever you want to call it, is yeah. that it ties into well, another another hypothesis that I love: the simulation theory, right? Sure. The the projections in the sky of the moon, or the projections in the sky of the of the seven, the the planets, you know, the, the the Elohim, whatever you want to call. It. There's different names for it. Yeah. But I when I was there and I was looking at all these rockets and these models and stuff like that I said one thing to myself and and this remember this is after a week of doing research on your stuff I said you know Mark says that pretty much space is fake yeah I'm an I'm an amateur astronomer you know I look up at the stars through my telescope and I and I and I see celestial bodies yeah and I said damn it and I and I told my fiance this and I said this is a lot of work for it to all be fake <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of a lot, a lot of work for us, sure. I mean, our engineering skills are are tiny by comparison, you know. But look at, yeah. I mean, to the ant, it looks like a lot of work, you know, the ant farm that we build. But for us, it's like, oh no, we can put that together in thirty minutes. 
Um, yeah, you're we're, right. We're you're talk- right. Yeah, for something that you don't understand, I could see where that could be an issue. You're right. Yeah, I mean, think about it this way. And, and I've had this dis- discussion with a lot of people. I had an am- several am- amateur astronomers come at me. It's like, look, I can see the moons of Jupiter through my telescope. Mm-hmm. It's like, fine, take a pair of binoculars, go to a planetarium. And I know that dates me because nobody goes to planetariums anymore. Planetarium, just so you know, kids, is a, um, a domed structure, like a small sports stadium but where mm-hmm. the seats are, where you can basically lie back in the seats. And you and look hear up. Neil deGrasse Tyson narrating it. Yeah, N- Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> narrating it. And, uh, and the planets and the stars are just lights on the ceiling. And I say, take a pair of binoculars to uh, one of these planetariums and, and look at Jupiter. Does it look spherical? Yes, it does. And I go, can you land on it? They go, well, no, it's just an image on the ceiling. I go, it's my point. I go, if you walk out of that building, who's to say you're just not in a much, much bigger building? with more lights on the ceiling, which has got engineering built in, you know, come on. We've had what HD television for not even 20 years. That's HD Mm -hmm. television. There's kids growing up now. It's like, wait, there used to be, you know, cheap television, like crappy television. It's like, yeah, but we didn't know it was crappy. What happens, you know, we've got what eight, 4k going on 8k now. Yeah. What what if you had million K monitors? What could you do with that sort of tech? You know, what, what could you fool? Which, you know, who could you fool? Which is why I use the Truman show as a great reference. If you spent a couple billion dollars, could you build a planetarium that was so big? And if somebody was born inside it, could you fool them? Yeah, you could. Because, the, and it's such a great line from that movie, we believe the world that is presented to us. Well, look at The Matrix. Look at The They're Matrix. perfect example. The, you the, know. The, the Matrix is a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful movie and its rival, uh, The 13th Floor, which Amazing. was based on a German movie from the 70s called World on a Wire, which is based on a book in the 60s called uh, Simulcron 3. No no small coincidence there that Simulcron simulation. And mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, puts, it blows my mind. And I, I even talk about this in my last book, in the, in the last chapter, where it, which is I'd love to talk to people more about simulations, but the, the general public doesn't understand it. They still don't. No. I mean, The Matrix is 21 years old. And <laughs> well, it's... It's like Morpheus. It's so hard to understand that we're in a simulation. And that book that you're talking about is the one that he opens up at the beginning. Yeah. And he uh, takes the, the, what the hell is it, the tapes or something out of it? Uh, Neo at the beginning of the movie. They they put that book in there. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, the... Yeah, most people, which is also why Morpheus says we don't free minds after a certain age. Because you just can't take it. You know, you really have a hard time, uh, especially, which is why Flat Earth skews younger. Uh, it was, ama- you know, that um, the U.gov survey that came out some years ago where they found, but they noticed that the 18 to 20, 24 year olds were skewing a full third against the globe. And it's like, really? And that that really, really that spooked science badly <laughs> to where that's when National wow. Geographic called me and, and other people called me and, and said that we could be <laughs> car- causing harm. But what blew me away was when under 18, we're skewing, pushing 50%. Now, of course, 50% anonymously. If you put them in a group of people, it's like, raise your hand if you think, no, no, they're not raising their freaking hand because of peer pressure. Um, look up, there's a wonderful, um, I don't know if you watch any gaming videos, but there's a wonderful video by a gamer called Asmon Gold, where he did a little straw poll and he said, is the earth flat? Actually, you know, just threw it up there and it's, it was, I think we were scoring 53% and you know, you know, what was it? 120 votes a second. We're, we're flying wow. through that thing. And it was amazing. So sorry, I, so, I'm going off track. What else? You got? It's all good, man. I, I got a few, I got some questions for you. So obviously yeah. we're talking about flat earth and what got you started into looking at the flat earth model? Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you got into it what in 2014? Yeah, 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 yeah. Middle of 2014 was when I looked into it. Worst mistake of my life because you were I, trying to troll people, weren't you? You were trying to make a troll video. And no, no, to- not even. Uh, in 2014, I wasn't doing anything. I was literally just having a peaceful, stay out of history's way life. You know, drinking wine and eating popcorn and watching movies and playing games, and um. Then all of a sudden, you know, I, I was going through, I'd gone through just about every conspiracy I could think of. It's like, okay, this I like, this I don't like. And it, and I didn't want to look at Flat Earth, and I did. And then I said, well, this is silly. I mean, Flat Earth, is, there's, obviously it's not real, right? It can't be real. So I tried to disprove it for, you know, week after week. And I, I was getting more and more frustrated to where that's when, you know, February of 2015, where I said, you know what? I'm just going to take a shot here, and I'm going to make a video or series of videos in this case. 
and really short, you know, less than 15 minutes long, put them out on the internet and, and say, okay, I don't think it's a globe anymore. Here's why. Tell me where I screwed up. And honest to God, you know, just wait. It's like, okay, some, some academic's going to say, okay, well, here's where you screwed up. And then you can, you know, go back to your normal life. And it was the opposite. People just started, uh, no, I, no time was I trying to troll anybody. I was literally just saying, you know, internet hive mind, help me out. Tell me where I made, where I made a mistake. And people started calling me from all walks of life. And it was the subject matter experts between 2015 and 2016, which blew me away. All branches of the armed forces, uh, engineers, pilots, um, surveyors, uh, air traffic controllers, take your pick. I mean, there was just all these, all these people that got a hold of me and they said, you know what? Not that crazy. Here's why. And I put them, you know, I interviewed them. I, I you know, did a little podcast of my own on, on TFR and um, interviewed these people, put them in a big list and just started pumping out more and more videos on a regular basis. And it just kept growing and growing to where now uh, it's just gotten ridiculous. I mean, we have conferences and, and I, I, I can't even go to all the conferences that are in different countries. We have regional meetups, hundreds and hundreds of regional meetups all over the country and outside of this country. And, and uh, I've done two books, uh, documentary. Um, and at this point, I, hell, I might even have an agent next week. So go for wow. it. Wow. Yeah, no. Who know? Yeah, that's funny where, you know, where life takes you. But yeah. So in, in a quick breakdown crash course, yeah. uh, what is flat earth? Can you take us through obviously flat? Yeah, it, it's what does it, it consist of? It's not just flat, but it's enclosed. So you're talking about you're living in right now. We're, we're taught, of course, that we're on this tiny little rock with a little bit of gas and water on top of it. And it's flying through space, you know, this impossible vacuum, this massive, massive universe, which is 99 percent wasted space. But what we're saying is that you're in a building basically like the Truman Show, like a basically a shallow sports stadium that's not in space at all. It could be sitting anywhere. It could be sitting on you know, God's desk for all we know. And um, it has walls and a floor and a ceiling. And uh, it'd be like if you take your, your favorite covered sports stadium. And I know they don't have a lot of covered ones down in um, Florida. But if you take a, a, like the Superdome and you hollow it out and you put a big saltwater lake in the middle of it, and then put some islands in the middle of that, which would be our continents, and then surround the entire outside of it with ice, which would be Antarctica. Um, Antarctica isn't, of course, the, the end of the world, but it's the beginning of the end to where the Antarctic coastline, if you went thousands of miles inland, I have absolutely no doubt that you would run into the edge of, of the world. It's not... It's not like Thor, where it's the cosmic waterfall, you know, everyone, that's the, the probably the biggest mistake is people say it's all oh, this flying asteroid, this flat asteroid in space. It's like, no, no, there's no space. There doesn't have to be space. In fact, the only reason you think there's space is because you've been told that over and over and over and over again for all these years, you know, we, why the, people get hung up on that a lot to where I've, I've literally had people come back at me and say, oh, it's like, okay, the moon landing was fake. We get that. But you can't tell me that like, everything else is fake too i was going if the moon landing was fake why would you believe anything else mm -hmm. so they, they they've been caught lying and that's my that's my problem you know when i was at kennedy space center because i look into all this stuff you yeah. know what i mean yeah and when you tell people and i want to get your input on this when you tell people about other conspiracy theories 9 11 was an inside job oh for sure yeah the earth is flat no 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 it's, no. Not. it's this and that. why the hostility and the dogma towards it it's you know what i mean it's too big that, that's why. I um, mean, you're absolutely right. Um, I've had, in fact, the, some of our biggest detractors are 9-11 fans where, you know, 9-11, you know, inside job. Everybody knows this. And 9-11 is not, you know, it's, it's been 20 something, 20 years, 20 years mm -hmm. since 9-11 since was uh, a thing. And, and people come to me, it's, you know, I can shut it down in, a, in a, one sentence. And they say, well, 9-11 knows real. It's like, really? Tell me about Building 7. You can explain yeah. Building 7 to me. Yeah, controlled and, demolition. Yeah. A lot of people yeah, don't know control, about that building. Yeah, building 7 wasn't hit by anything. Just dropped. But in fact, mm -hmm. it's amazing how many people don't even know that Building 7 was a thing. That's because yeah. the island was evacuated hours earlier. And so there's it just never the news didn't talk about it. But they come back and say, no, 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 um, the, the flatter thing. It's it's too big. It's it's because you can't walk away from it. That's why. The, what I like to say about conspiracies is that most conspiracies you can walk away from if you wanted to. There are some secrets you can bury in the desert, no question. But 
Flat Earth is literally so, and figuratively. Yeah, well, literally and figuratively. <laughs> go go outside of Vegas. <laughs> There's a lot of bodies yeah. out there. Mm-hmm. Um, not not just Area 51. I mean, Area 51 is a real thing. But you don't have to Egypt. Think, you don't have to think about it. Flat Earth is, is again, which is why it's so like the Matrix. Is you're telling a person that the world isn't what they think it is. And you might as well be telling about the Matrix. And you saw what happened to Neo. He freaks out. And and that wasn't wasn't a, a bad depiction because of lots of people I've talked to people they they go through the five stages of of acceptance. You know, denial followed by anger, bargaining, depression, and then finally acceptance. They they get upset really. really. I had a guy call me. Um, uh, I was on a radio show wow, back in 2015, and he he said that his father worked for NASA, and he's and he lives yelling at me. And he was older than I was. And he goes, he goes, how dare you? How dare you tell me the world isn't what I think it is? And there, there, that was it right there, which was your, if your conditioning is so, so complete, it, you know, it, we're talking, if you go through 12 years of high school, okay, here, here's the big one. The, the, here's the big reason. You want the, the short version of why people get so bent out of shape. It's because of the American flag. Boy, you say, what do you mean? Well, if you go into any school, I don't care, grade school, middle school, high school, there's an American flag sitting in the corner. It just sits there. We don't talk about it. We may pledge allegiance. We may not. But you go through 12 years of high school and that flag in the corner, for some people, inspires them to join the military right then and mm-hmm. there. I'm willing to mm-hmm. fight for this flag. I'm willing to fight for America. To, just because to die for it. Yeah, just because it's there. I mean, there are people that get really bent out of shape. You br- try burning a, a an American flag somewhere in the Midwest. You will oh. get you'll get stoned mm-hmm. for for that. Well, just below that American flag in a lot of classrooms is the globe. It's just a toy. It's just this stupid little blue toy, 12 to 18 inches wide, that sits there, same as the flag, and it sits there from the time you're in kindergarten to the time you graduate from high school. Well, what's the difference? Not much. So when people they people equate the same thing. You know, it's like, oh, well, that's that's where we live. Kind of like the flag. It's where we live. I'm willing to fight for it. They're willing to defend it. Just not not for any other reason other than it's been with them their entire lives. And if you have a bachelor's degree in a physical science or a master's degree in anything, you're not getting out of this. I mean, you're you were until the mainstream media says, you know, get caves in. You're you're not going to believe it. And I have I've run into that many, many times. I mean, yes, there's. There's a few people out there, you know, some engineers and other people that have, have but for the by and large, the majority of people that have, you know, the higher education you get, the more indoctrinated you are. And there's, I mean, astrophysicists, they're doomed. There's yeah. nothing, there's nothing they can do. So, well, so. To, to add on, on what you're talking about science, you know, with NASA, and there's a lot of things people don't know that they're not going to accept. For example, when I was at Kennedy Space Center this, this weekend with my fiance, she's not into the conspiracy. She hates it, but I have to unload my information somewhere. So sure. here I am pointing out, I was reading this thing. I was like, oh, and Von Braun, you know, with the help of Von Braun, I was like, do you know who Von Braun was? Do you know who what he did and who he was? Oh, yeah. No, right? Uh, people don't know that. And then uh, I pointed out also while we were we were seeing these, these models of these rovers, uh, JPL was like, I was like, uh, do you know who JPL was? John Parsons Laboratory. Do you know what he did and who he was associated oh, with? Oh yeah. And this is the fa- the father of modern day propulsion. You know, rocketry propulsion. And it's stuff like that that people don't know. And once you go into that rabbit hole, it's like, listen, again, it'll take away from that from that patriotic things. Like, no, we're the best. And I can understand where that's coming because when the indoctrination is so deep yeah. and so deeply rooted, you know, it's very hard to to you know take that away and w- when you're speaking about flat earth if yep. you really look there's various clues and i want to get into that with you uh there's various things pointing towards it and then obviously you have the ancient literatures yep. and these uh holy scriptures of different different uh religions and different parts of the world that point also to what could be a flat earth and one of my favorite ones uh, the Book of Enoch, oh yeah, uh, Enochian literature, where uh, you know God or whoever <laughs> had the watchers, and you know pretty much subcontracted out the work, and it was pretty much an experiment for him. And the reason there was the big flood was because when when the watchers started messing with the with the you know genetics. with the humans, yeah, the genetics and and you know the Nephilim and you have the fallen angels and all that stuff, uh, he got angry. 
Yeah. Because why? Because he was messing. They were messing with his experiment. Yeah. He got angry because they were messing with his experiment. And even now, uh, to touch on the subject that you that we're talking about, as you get more and more education, the more uh, what naive you get. But mm-hmm. the thing is, even now we don't quantum physics for example we can't we don't know that's guessing that that's literally guessing you know the the universe is 13 billion years old how do you even comprehend that number right in one light year there is seven trillion miles how do you even comprehend that that's that's what blows my mind as an amateur astronomer that i look up at something and they tell me oh it's 200 light years away yeah what (laughs) can you it's a thousand miles from here to new york and you tell me it's seven how do you even comprehend that you know that nebula that neb that gas nebula is you know 300 light years big what yeah yeah yeah, you know? yeah it's a, we the numbers are are so huge when it they what well, they say the numbers are so Crazy. huge in space that the only way they can make them even remotely um relatable to the general public is they have to use brand new terms I mean, you know, like they literally light. made the unit. The astronomical unit was made by who? By NASA? By who? By somebody who was run by the government? Yeah. By the fucking reptilians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the um, the the astronomical unit, the light year. I mean, the fact that we have to say that light travels per second because when we say anything bigger than a second, the numbers just become the dizzying. You don't you don't ever ever want to think of them. But yeah, to to your point with space. They, you know, the, the, there's certain things when, when you look at the solar system, you know, and we've had to, the flatters communities had to learn so many little scientific facts. In fact, I've, I've had to relearn more science because of flat earth, which is amazing the, I, I know more, more about astronomy now than, than your average person on the street, just because I had to learn it because I was going after it. And that is okay. So the earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour, supposedly at the equator, it's spinning around the sun at 60 something thousand miles an hour. But the one that threw me was that <laughs> was that the whole solar system is flying sideways like a frisbee flying sideways yeah, not that's, like that's a, the new one right yeah the, like flying sideways at, at half a million miles an hour and where the sun is basically it's like a shotgun where where the sun is the center of the shotgun pattern and everything else is sailing around it and i'm going wait a minute what, what about what about comets and other things you're, you're saying that the, the sun there's these null gravity points and yet when we send spacecraft off, they just don't go like when you drop a golf ball out of a car window. Oh, yeah, it'll bounce with you for a couple bounces, but then it's gone because the mm-hmm. momentum, you know, you're not with the car anymore. It's gone. It's, it's going to trail off in the distance. I'm going. So we send long distance space probes to these far planets. The, and our solar system is traveling sideways at half a million miles an hour. Those probes account for that. And you have a, a reason, a way, tell me, tell me how it happens. And it, I mean, that's just the beginning. Don't get me started on space. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my God, there was a, there's, there's dedicated physicists out there spending time swearing. All they're doing their entire lives now are, are researching what they call dark matter. Dark they matter. Know what, the, isn't, what, that, what that is. It isn't a, even a thing. It's not a thing. It's a theory. But, but yeah. they've said it so many times that people believe it's like a real thing. It's like, oh, you mean like Thanos and the whole space thing? I was like, no, not like Thanos. It's not real. <laughs> it's just a theory yeah. because there's so much. That's why it's dark because we can't see it. Exactly. We don't know what it is. It makes up, what, 80-something percent or like oh, yeah. 95 percent of everything? Yeah, what, <laughs> yeah you're right. They call it dark because if they called it invisible matter, people would be like, yeah. get out of here. It's like you can't just it sounds make cooler that. when you say dark matter and dark energy like yeah oh, yeah what? and they, they they come up with stuff you know the gravitational waves that they supposedly detect and they don't later they revise it later it's like oh no we didn't but the headlines still run it anyway how many how many stories every month now do we see it's like oh we found these super planets these exoplanets planets that you could hold life blah 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 you know we're gonna there's there's an asteroid made out of diamonds there's an asteroid made out of gold there's an <laughs> asteroid shaped like santa claus another one shaped like a jack-o-lantern it just never yeah. freaking well, ends you you talk about that but every now and again we're finding what new continents that they're talking about yeah, like yeah. oh under new zealand there's a new continent oh between europe and and wherever there's a continent squished in with you know and that's like we want to go to other planets but you know space that's literally a wormhole but then you would think what you were talking about the different rotations and all this stuff you know yeah. you have stephen hawking who talks about specific uh Spaghettification. Oh where yeah, you're yeah. Like, if you're on the edge of a black hole, wouldn't that happen to us if we're just like swirling all these different directions and like, what? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, 
That's yeah. crazy. It's a it's a great so, they're great little stories, and I, I I figured it out you know a couple of years ago, which was you know because people say what about those stories? I'm going the stories they don't they don't even care if you read the article. All they want you to do is glance at the headline or maybe even glance at the image, which is always some CGI thing, and it's about that there is space. That's all they care about, which is, hey, there, there could be a face on Mars. Hey, there could be some thing on the top of Jupiter. Hey, there's things on Saturn. It, they don't care about, it. again, the, the story itself. All it is is like you're thinking about Mars because you think you're in space and you know Jupiter space. Everything's just this space drumbeat to remind you with it. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, you're in you're in the solar system. You're in this universe. And it, and it works very effectively, except that nowadays with social media, They've had to really pick up the pace because the the stuff is has not aged well. You know, a lot of people are asking now. It's like, so why hasn't anybody got back to the moon since 1972? I, I I was wondering that today. Actually, I was wondering that today. And while I was over there at Kenny Space Center, there was things going on, and I was like, you know, that mission that they went around the dark side of the moon. And I was like, I told my fiance, I was like, you know what they didn't talk about is the weird noises that those guys were hearing when they were what two hours or four hours on the dark side of the moon and the weird noises that they recorded that they they didn't even know what it was and then they came out and said oh it was just interference yeah and it was like these weird alien noises. it just makes me think of hp lovecraft you know the uh that one story he has of the guy who plays the weird music up in his <laughs> up in his apartment and the guy underneath him is like listening to him oh you know, yeah the yeah cause the cosmic noise i forgot the, the the name of the story but the cosmic noises i just so it makes me think about it's like you know these frequencies yeah. that but so to wrap up on this on this space stuff because i know that's a wormhole literally you know no yeah 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 uh to wrap that up what what the hell are we seeing mark what what is the moon what are the planets what is it if it's not real if space isn't real it, you might as well be looking at a television screen it'd be like showing somebody from let's say go back 30 years ago 4k television today I, and i know you're probably not old enough to remember but when the the early hd televisions came out they were so crisp compared to what you know we could actually compare and what we were using that we we're like wow it's like actual you, you could actually move your face really close and, and like newscasters for example had to change you know some news newscasters quit because the the resolution was so good um, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at a projection. You're looking at a really high-end projection system. Uh, the, the planets, the planets and the stars. That's easy. Those are just lights in the freaking sky. Um, the sun and the moon, a little more involved. Um, one is an incandescent light bulb that generates some heat, and the moon, which generates a cold light, um, which is just mind blowing to me that it actually generates a, a cool laser light, which anybody with a twenty-dollar infrared thermometer could could test. And but they're again, they're just lights in the sky. Um, it's basically a giant. What you're looking at is a giant clock and no one's ever going to dispute that. I mean, you know, it's the whole, you know, astrology is based on that, really. It's the it's the first clock ever created and, and it's universal. You don't need to know any languages or anything like that. You don't even have to really know numbers. It is a giant, elaborate clock in the sky. Um, and but it's very very ornate you know it's um, ornamental so uh, you know many scriptures have said you know the sky is just you know not only does it tell you know the, the seasons and all that other stuff but it also you know signs and wonders type thing so it's it's a very elaborate very cool looking clock which wouldn't be out of the question and I know one of the other things that you talk about also is the and I've seen them personally. The craters on the moon, oh. and the way that they're positioned. Well, they're they're yeah. perfect. That that's yeah. the part that people again, the average, and me included. I am not talking down when I'm when I'm saying this. The average person on the street does not. We do, we do not get taught physics, and engineering, and chemistry, and anything along those lines. And the moon is a perfect example of that, which is. The, the law of averages, statistics, right? If you throw enough rocks at something, eventually things are going to skid off in different directions, mm -hmm. right? Well, all the moon craters are, are created like the they were hit with meteors or asteroids or whatever you want to call them at a perfect 90 degree angle, meaning they came straight down. <laughs> <laughs> at at it in all the directions they whatever it hit it came straight down it's like okay first off how did the gravity of the earth not deflect those in any way shape or form and where did they come from that they had to be come straight down it's like it's not like it, it absolutely looks this way and it looks like the moon was decorated that way 
Which is like, whoever built the moon just happened to put the, you know, maybe whether they were doing it to put bread, breadcrumbs or, for us to follow or if it would just look cooler, I don't know. But that look at the craters. They're all, there, there should be, if you're saying, well, what, what do you mean? What you, should you see? You should see skidding marks, you, you know, mm -hmm. meteors that glance the moon's surface and flew off. I mean, go to any firing range. And you will see, yeah, you'll see some dead hits, like, you know, on targets here yeah. and there. But the it's the ricochets, the deflections. That's where most of them are. And the moon is is not that. It's the opposite. And, and again, people miss it. People miss the the obvious things. Uh, not to go into the moon thing too much, but you know, look at any moon photo and and tell me why the shadows are in different directions. And, and again, people's like, what should it look like? It's well, because it, all the shadows are supposed to go in the same directions. You know, one light source, yeah. shadows in one direction. That's how light works. <laughs> I didn't think about that one. <laughs> and and it's like, but but again, but, but if people, if the, the it's kind of like the spacesuit thing, and I don't want to get in, go into it too much. But the spacesuit yeah. thing was a big key for me, which was the spacesuit defies physics. Everything, if you put in a vacuum chamber, t blows blows up into a balloon. Take a can of soda, you take a like a Stretch Armstrong or, you know, any action figure that's got anything pressurized, it blows up into a bloom and then bursts. And there's only one thing we it's ever been created that doesn't do this, and that's the spacesuit. And and, and I, I ask people, I go, which is why I put the spacesuit challenge. I go, give me a freaking spacesuit. Put me in a vacuum chamber. Tell me how I live. Because tell me what, what in that spacesuit defies physics. It, it yeah. and and my point is is like we see the astronauts running around the moon in high you know with slow motion which doesn't make any sense because they should be running at high speed it's like oh okay we'll just slow the camera speed down and they're they're running around the moon and they can bend their arms and their knees and their fingers absolutely perfectly they have articulation points where it's like the, it, the suit seems perfectly flexible it was brilliant whoever came up with that idea i hope he retired and and died peacefully because it, it was a great idea it was like because the early suits, you guys can look this up, which is the early NASA spacesuits were made of heavy plastic and metal and they looked horrible and mm -hmm. clunky. And, the, you know, they couldn't get in and out of anything. They could barely even walk. I saw them. They had like a timeline of all the ones yeah. over there at Kevin Space Center. And, and so, but, you know, the engineers going, yeah, this is not going to work for production. It's like, what sort of spacecraft can we, are we going to have to try to freaking build to even get these guys to say that we went up there? And then somebody says, you know what? Let's just get them soft suits. Nobody knows anything about physics. <laughs> They'll buy it. We'll just put it on television. No one will question it. And I'll be damned. Of course, in 1969, nobody knew what those spacesuits were supposed to do. Nobody yeah. ever. And and you guys want to look something up, look up, you know, it's real easy to test. Um, just go into YouTube and type in um, uh, vacuum versus steel rail car. People, I don't know, engineers love doing this where you apply a vacuum field to the inside of a steel, not aluminum, a steel rail car, and it and it just instantly implodes like it was crushed by Godzilla. Instantly, wow. I mean, like in a fraction of a second. And you're saying, well, what's the point? My, my point is, is that the movies, and I blame part of this on the movies, is the movies, it's the one thing they really, really, really get wrong. They always make it, they always make it seem like that. When you open it up, you just freeze over and die because oh, what because well yeah. there, there's some See, movies right? that go the other way where they say oh there's a pinhole it's like get the duct tape you only have two minutes of air left and they're running around it's like no 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 if there's a hole in anything there's a hole in the side of your spaceship you're getting sucked out of it huh? well one you're dead you're dead instantly yeah it'll try to suck you out instantly but it's like in a fraction of a second um, like if you remember the end of aliens where, you know, she pulls the airlock and she's like, she's literally yeah. crawling against the vacuum and, and <laughs> yeah, you know, there's all this that. air rushing out. It's, um, it, that's that, no, it, she'd be dead. Uh, and the girl would be dead. Everybody would be dead. I mean, there was a Star Trek episode recent, well, not recently, it was during, um, Enterprise where there was a, like a dime size hole literally leading to space and he plugs it with his finger and then finish, then patches the hole with meatloaf. <laughs> Would not make that up if I tried. And you show that yeah. on television, people are like, oh, wow, I really should get some meatloaf. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. anyway. So so to to move on, because yeah. that's a wormhole, literally. If you guys want to look it up, look it up. It's yeah. a wormhole. There's a ton of evidence, whatever. Yeah. Uh, what are – so we talked about the flat earth model and Antarctica being a ring around it. Right. What, what do you feel the, are the key pieces of evidence that point us to a flat earth? The biggest one far and away is long distance photography far and away. Um, I mean, I've got five great points, but the, the, the first one, which everyone will go to right away is long distance, meaning that if you look off into the distance, 
you're looking off and you know over the water usually you're looking over the curvature of the earth and you know the boat goes off in the horizon and it disappears and you say well it went over the curvature of the earth plain and simple and i would have been right there with you 10 years ago and then hd cameras got a lot better a lot better to where they they the zoom now and like the p1000 is like 180x which is ridiculous well now that boat which was gone remember it's gone because of the curvature of the earth if you believe mainstream is eight inches per mile per mile or eight inches per mile squared which means you know three miles is three times three is nine times eight is 72 10 miles is 10 times 10 is 100 times eight inches 800 inches and it gets worse that's and worse the curvature that it goes down the, yeah, eventually it gets, it gets more severe because eventually it's got to go yeah. vertical because eventually you're talking about going off the side of a ball. And when, but all of a sudden, and I didn't even tell people to do this. This is where it was really amazing. People just started running down to the beaches and with their cameras and start zooming in on things. <laughs> and they were zooming in on things that were way, way too far away extremely far away as and sea level sea level is one thing we've also got guys shooting things from airplanes which are ridiculously far but sea level is is easier for the math and like the the one that i run into recently which was done by some of the the uk guys um nathan oakley uh, nathan oakley's channel which is really great at this where they were shooting in fact i think the initial shots were were done at miramar beach which is california i believe and they were shooting oil rigs in the distance. One was at six miles and one was at pushing 10. And the, the, the camera was only a foot off the water, a foot. What was amazing was, well, not only were they not supposed to see those oil rigs, not by a long shot, what was amazing was the horizon was behind them on top of it. Now, which, which blows, it's, it's, we're, we're calling it one of our, our globe killers because it, it, again, a lot of people aren't going to necessarily understand this, but the horizon eventually cannot be in, cannot be behind those objects. They have to be in front, have to be in front. So, you know, the oil rigs should be partially obscured by the oh, curvature. I got you. Yeah. And yeah. they're, they're not, they're off there in the distance and there's no excuse. There's no optical excuse that people yeah, decide it would just keep going and going. And obviously the horizon would be behind it because it just keeps going endlessly. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The, the difference between the, the short version of this is the a flat horizon if it's perfectly flat it, the, the only limit to your viewing distance would be your camera or the thickness of the atmosphere because you know we're only we're breathing in mostly nitrogen and a little and bit of oxygen. pollution and stuff like well that yeah and well. pollution and haze and temperature and humidity and all that other stuff i mean it's a soup and it was a vacuum you could see very very far which funny enough that's what happens in the simulations that we make when we make games and this has been true since games have been out there i don't care if it's modern like fortnite or gta or minecraft or whatever you can see really, 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 really far. And the reason is, is because you're, when we build simulations, they're all flat. In fact, they're a box. It's a big cake box where in fact the sky is just the, cause computers don't like circles. They don't like rounded edges. Computers in fact, um, can't draw a circle to save their life. It's just a bunch of tiny squares. There's a reason why pixels are squares. So that's, that's the big one is long distance photography. Um, the other ones would of course be stuff we were talking about earlier, like the vacuum of space versus gravity. Um, anyone wants to question that it's like, okay, tell me how, if you put a vacuum chamber above you right now, uh, why, and then, you know, pop, pop the cork on it. Why? And the air is going to rush. It's what's going to happen. It's going to go upstairs. If, if there's a vacuum chamber above you, it's going to go upstairs a hundred, hundred out of a hundred times, a million out of a million times. And the question is, why didn't gravity keep the air in your room right now? And you say, what's your point? I go, my point is, is when you go outside, how is gravity keeping the air on the ground you couldn't even <laughs> keep it in your room and that was a tiny little piece of crap vacuum chamber so why is the vacuum of space which is super 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 big why is the vacuum of space not ripping our atmosphere off um third one would be the um, the eclipse shadow the eclipse shadow is too small can't can't be that we say the the sun and the moon are you know less than 50 miles wide and the eclipse shadow, when it's running across the ground, the blackout zone is only 70 miles wide. Yeah, that's interesting. Right? Well, the moon is 2,000 miles wide. So why is the blackout zone only 70 miles wide? And, and science says, well, you know, it convexes down, you know, these f funny optics. And it turns like a magnifying glass, but with shadows. And we're like, yeah. Something that we would not understand or be able to prove on our own. Because, exactly. Again, it's like, like, like you said, it may be, it may seem like hard work for us, but for somebody who know, who knows it or... You know, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's not out of the question. Uh, so if it wasn't the moon, then what did something else block out the sun? It's the uh, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it, the um, the fourth one, of course, is the moon temperature, which I love so much. Um, the moon the moon generates a cold light. 
Um, you can you can buy a point and click infrared thermometer or or use different thermometers. But um, so if it's you know if if it's ninety degrees in the sun, it's eighty degrees in the shade. We've all seen that. But in the moonlight, if it's fifty degrees in the moonlight, it's warmer in the moonshade. And and I know that doesn't sound strange right away, but it's like no no no, meaning. It's literally, you will get cold if you stand in moonlight. You will actually be warmer if you stand in the shade. And it shouldn't be that way. Now, does that prove make a flat earth? No, 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 it does not. But it absolutely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon because everyone knows, well, the moon is lit up because it's reflecting the sun. And yeah. So, yeah, that's what we're told. Find me a scientist. I have yet to find a scientist to even explain. We've got wonderful experiments out there. In fact, there's there's the, the even the best experiments, and I was the one that, that suggested this. If you take a magnifying glass to sunlight, you can burn things, right? Burn paper. You take a mm-hmm. magnifying glass to moonlight, you can actually make things even colder than normal moonlight, which is... Really? Yeah, yeah it's mind-blowing. And again... I would have never thought about doing that. There's video tests on this, and we've done tests, again, with, with water and copper strips and straight-up um, infrared thermometers. And a guy did one um, a couple months ago with Predator Vision, you know, the, 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 the cameras that can see, you know, like Predator does, the, the thermal imaging mm-hmm. cams. And he proved it right then and there. He wasn't even one of ours. He just went out to, to see if he could do it. Um, the, the other big one that I try to throw at people, the, the last one anyway, the, out of my top five, is the, um, the Van Allen radiation belt question, which, again, I've thrown at scientists. They don't know what to do with it. And I say, okay, is the Van Allen radiation belt announced by NASA in 1958? No, I'm sorry, 1959. Is it deadly? Yes or no? And they say, well, it is, obviously. And I go, really? I go, because the only thing that can stop radiation is water, um, a whole bunch of water or lead or gold. Right? And so how do the Americans get through it without any shielding? Because they didn't use gold or lead or a whole bunch of water. And they made round trips from the 60s to the early 70s. And nobody died. And nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. Um, there's still five of these guys walking around today. How, how, how'd they do it? And then, then I've seen guys flip. It's like, well, okay, well, it's not very deadly. I'm going, well, yeah, you can't go there either because you go to the NASA.gov website and there's a wonderful video there called Orion Trial by Fire, which they NASA made. I think it won a, like a, lo, a, a local Emmy in Texas where they say, oh, yeah, we can't, um, we can't do any capsule testing with people because we haven't solved the radiation problem yet. Of the Van Allen belts. And it's like, what? What are you talking about? You solved it perfectly. In fact, you solved it flawlessly. Nobody, you know, you 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 beat it, you beat the odds there, and nobody ever had a problem with radiation. And now you're saying you can't even test it. And yeah, between those five questions, it usually it usually shuts people down. Again, do any of them absolutely prove flat earth? No, but they create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that it gets you thinking. And then, yeah, you, that's, and that's where people start. And again, well, I'll tell you and anyone's listening. If you like your life the way it is, <laughs> you think you got a good bead, <laughs> bead thing, bead on things. Don't look at this because trust, if you yeah, trust me, dude, this isn't the only thing that I've looked at where it's made me question. But oh, uh, th- you know, well, this one's bad because once you're in it, I mean, especially if you're if you're trying to fight it, you will have some really tough days where. I mean, I was sitting there, I mean, I had this moment, literally, I was just banging my head on the keyboard. It's like, no, this can't be right. This can't be right. But again, you know, the government lies about a whole bunch of stuff. (laughs) Why wouldn't they lie about something like this? It's just information. That's all. So, so Mark, now that we know this, what does this all mean? and, and, And who benefits from the globe agenda? Why? And I know we talked about Enoch and stuff, you know, where you were right. controlling the, the experiment. Who who benefits from from well? From the, all the big this? benefit is, I hate to say it, it's us, which is it's just civilization. Meaning, the the problem with this this one is, is that we didn't even figure it out. Even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960. Well, by then the infrastructures have already been hardened. You know, the civilization is already built up. I mean, you can't. It's and it's pretty fragile. I mean, for God's sakes, look what the coronavirus is doing lately. And that's just mm-hmm. a, that's just a stupid virus, which may or may not be completely accurate. And so if it's that's 5G, the case, by I mean, the th- way. Think, think about this. <laughs> if you found out in 1960, remember, this is before way before the Internet. If you found out in 1960, would you tell the general public? So you sit down with a meeting with some of your, you know, smoking man friends you know people people of power you know let's call it the power meeting 
And you say, well, should we tell the people? And it's like, okay, well, what benefit does... First off, they'll say, what? who does it benefit if we tell people now? And then they say, okay, what could go wrong? It's like, oh, okay. Well, first off, every university in every country would have to... The astrophysics and astronomy, that's gone immediately. And then your remaining <laughs> physical sciences, geology, hydrology, biology, archaeology, take your pick. Those would literally have to be re rebuilt from the ground up. Libraries would have to be emptied and refilled i mean it would be chaos in academics that's just academics economically world markets would have to be suspended for months until you figured out exactly what it meant uh because you don't know i mean you're, you're talking about a massive paradigm shift um but the biggest one the the reason it's like who benefits here who benefits is science more more than anyone which is what our civilization is based off of you're talking about l telling the five major religious houses of the world judaism hinduism buddhism islam christianity you're basically telling them that they now have leverage against science and you're also telling them not to use it right to show restraint do you think that those religious houses are going to show restraint not really no um because they've been beat over the head with textbooks for the last five centuries and the, between those three things you're talking about some potential big shock waves that could go through the the system and so it wasn't that they benefited as much as they could use it to hold on to things until they decided to let this out to the to the general public and then figure out a way that it would benefit them i don't think it benefited them ba anybody back in 1960 it was only like it's okay we can't tell let anyone know this it's like it's like telling somebody you know they're adopted after they're 30 years old yeah. What what good is it going to do? It's probably not going to do any good to tell them, but it could, could cause a lot of damage. And so that's where we are now. Um, you're talking about the the infrastructure has been put in place. You know, you've got high-speed internet, social media, six billion smartphones. More people own smartphones now than have running water. And now you have a way of pushing out the narrative to everybody simultaneously to get the story straight. You know, the old criminal thing, get your story straight. That's what, you're, yeah. that's what you have the ability to push out. And if you can do that, yeah, I mean, you can push out a, a fantastic narrative to where nobody even gets in trouble. I mean, all you have to do is say, well, you know, an advanced civilization told us to do it and, and, and you know, make up anything you want. And that way you can let NASA off the hook somehow because NASA is too big to fail. You know, they're a branch of the U.S. military. The U.S., United States. That's what I kept seeing on the, on the, on the models. United States, USA. Oh, you know, yeah. It's all... Yeah, NASA, you know, the American flag, people, but then again, the the Nazis put us on the uh, on the moon. You know, well, if we ever did go on the yeah, moon. Yeah, don't don't forget that even though NASA is so fascinating to me because you know, yeah, they wear white uniforms, they don't carry guns, they smile for the camera, they are the face of science, but they are absolute. They are uniquely military. You know, they were built on the still burning embers of the, of the Nazi war machine. You know, the, mm -hmm. the Soviets in the United States, we split the scientists. A little, yep. <laughs> a little tip for people. If you're really, really, really smart, you don't die in, in yeah. war. <laughs> you are treated, you are more valuable than gold. And that's yeah. what they did. It's like, oh, yeah, we got to get some of these guys. You are packed. You know, you are sent off. Your war record is expunged. And you get treated you're like freaking. You're good to go. Oh, yeah. yeah you so are set. Von Braun, <laughs> he could do no wrong. He absolutely was, you know, he could, he could do anything he wanted. It's like, look, in any other situation, he'd be, a, he'd be a war criminal for God's sake. Yeah, sexy. definitely. He is a war. He criminal. is a war criminal. But, but bec if you're really, really smart, again, resources are resources and you know, exactly. you're not going to, we're, we're not going to kill all, him. It's all about who you know. And, and, you know, to touch on that, that's why I like the, the flat earth model because it, 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 it you know, accents the simulation because what you were saying about, you know, let's say it was the reptilians, right? Sure. Whatever. Yeah. Or the the insectoid race from Rick and Morty from another planet, another dimension, <laughs> yeah. whatever. You know, let's say it is them. Yeah. Right. They're the elites. They're super rich. They have all the money. They were dealt a good hand in this simulation, right? Yeah. So it's like you said, why would they expose it? Oh God. When yes. they're the ones that have the upper hand. And if if we could leave this simulation, just how when that guy in the Matrix wanted to cut a deal with uh agent smith and said listen i want to you know when you load me back up i don't remember i don't want to remember anything i want to be super rich this and that da, da, da. i want to have it all yeah you know why would he want to leave once he has all that 
Yeah, it's you know, it's you know what I mean. Yeah, it, it's something you know. You you kind of got me thinking about something which I'll probably use in in interviews moving forward. It's like because people ask me that all the time. It's like who would benefit? It's not that they would you would benefit. It's that you wouldn't lose anything. You know yeah, the 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 rich don't want to lose their their biggest thing is they don't want to be poor. You know they you don't we ain't got nothing to lose. Yeah, We're peasants. There's a, there's a <laughs> they do. <laughs> there's a wonderful rule of power. It's the number one rule of power, which is stay hidden. That is, I mean, it's it's kind of the the weird paradox of, of having power is the true people of power can't be public because they're not on the Forbes list. They're not on the Forbes list. No, they're, no, they're not. And, and so when everyone says, "Oh, the richest man in the world," I correct everybody every time. I say the oh, most yeah. public man in the you know man in the world. It's like when Bill Gates is like, "Bill, oh, Bill Gates, richest man in the world." Or at the time, I was like, "No, he's the most public." And the reason why is because the the old saying, um, the the stay hidden thing, the, the longer version of that is, never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown. If the public doesn't know who you are, they can't burn it down. They cannot go after you. Mm -hmm. And this is why you kings and presidents, yeah. there's coups happen, but that's because you know there it's those are the people that took that risk. The the really really powerful people, they don't take that chance. They don't want to be known. And in fact, the X Files, you know, the, the series from the '90s, they were the ones that pushed that out more than anything. Especially the X Files movie, where the people that were sitting around the table, you had no idea who they were, and that's the point. You know, they, you know, nobody knew who they were, and you were never going to know. So, uh, so Mark, I have two two last questions for you, and yeah. we'll, we'll wrap up with these two last questions. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I I don't know if you've been asked this before. What would change your mind about flat earth? What would you need to see to be like, listen, I will hang my gloves up and I was wrong this entire time. What 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 would it need to be, Mark? To, one of to... one of two things. Uh and no, I have I have gotten that question before. Not that often, but but I've refined my answer over the years, which is the the if you wanted to make it to where it would absolutely prove it for me. Put a 4K camera on the on the capsule of any rocket that's leaving this world. Turn it on, point it at the ground. Don't point it up. Point it at the ground. Make sure it doesn't move. Make sure it doesn't sputter. And because all every everything we've ever shot up with rockets, the cameras are on like stage one or stage two, which is very, done very deliberately. And what should happen is as that rocket leaves, the Earth should turn, you know, like you're, you're moving a basketball away from your face. It should turn into a globe. And it's never happened in the history of space travel in any space program. No one's ever, 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 ever done that. It's, they, they always, when they get up to a certain altitude and it's not very high, they switch over to computer generation or uh, CGI graphics or they just start editing the footage. And it's like, give me unedited 4K footage from any rocket. I don't care whose, whose rocket it is. And it wouldn't cost that much. You know, we, you know, you could put it on a third-party 4K camera. Just give me the freaking footage and let us analyze it like anything. Let us bring it into Photoshop or Visual Studio or whatever. That That's the, the harder version, which is why I came up with the easy version. The easy version is the vacuum chamber test for me, which is it's simple because if... It, basically, I'm saying that the spacesuit, if the spacesuit is wrong, then every single thing that shows somebody in a spacesuit is also a lie. So, which is why it's like, look, every spacesuit you've ever designed ever, again, statistics, no spacesuit has ever, ever had a problem. Nobody's ever died in a spacesuit ever. It's, it's been flawless from the moon, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Soyuz, the space station, the mm. whole thing. So give me a freaking spacesuit. I don't care what year it's from because they're all perfect, apparently. Give me a freaking spacesuit, not tethered. None of this tethered um, G suit, you know, the, the G4 suits they use in fighter planes. Give me a self-contained, you know, because there's got to be, remember, there's this magical thing in the backpack that, that they've got and put me in a vacuum chamber and pull the switch. And of course, it'd be nice if there was somebody from science in there with me. Otherwise, I'd just become a martyr. But that, that would go a <laughs> long, long way because if you can show, and of course, I'd want to know before I got in there, it's not a necessity, but I think I'd be curious. It's like, tell me, because I still have yet to find a scientist to do this. Tell me what is in that backpack that stops a freaking vacuum. Forget, I don't care about the heating and cooling and oxygen and CO2 scrubbers and all that other crap. Tell me what, what magical thing to, you know, does that. And, and let me throw in one more little barb into that, which is. If you want to have some fun, find me audio, any audio footage. I don't care if it's video or audio or whatever. Find me audio footage of any astronaut that ever complain, that ever talks about how much air he's got left. Ever. 
And you're thinking, well, what do you mean? I go, well, okay, if anyone knows anybody that's ever scuba dived, the only thing scuba divers ever, ever, ever care about is the freaking mm -hmm. how, how much time is left. They're always looking at their watch or their gauges. How much air do I get left? They're checking constantly. And when they drop like on below 10 minutes, they're on their, they're already thinking of, I'm on their way out. But when it came to astronauts, especially the ones on the moon, they never talked about it. They could just walk around and do all this stuff. And they never were checking time and never find me. So it's like, oh, we only got 20 minutes of air left, Fred. Oh, I'm down to my oxygen levels are down to, you know, 13% or blah, blah, blah. Never, ever happened. It's like, again, just glossed over it. People are like, oh, wow, they don't seem to. It's kind of like the, um, not, not to go off on a quick tangent. It's kind of like the gas gauges in Star Wars. Right? So like eight movies, no, there was no gas cages. You could fly around, <laughs> no, no problem, yeah, right? You never ran out of fuel ever. And then <laughs> in the freaking Last Jedi movie, gas cages. It's like, yeah, what? It's when it's convenient. But, you know, uh, so, I saw an episode with uh, Joe Rogan. We had that astronaut on. Oh, um, speaking, you know, Scott Kelly? Some, yeah, something like or that. Or Terry Verse. Oh, like, no, I think it was Hatfield. I think it was the mustache guy. Hatfield. No, it was bald. It was oh, bald then it was Scott Kelly. Yeah. So, uh, Joe Rogan, he's like, yeah, when I was looking out this window, uh, you know, because the, the time before that I went over there, you know, there wasn't a window. And Joe Rogan was like, wait, there wasn't a window be the first time you went? And then the second time, who built the window? And he's like, <laughs> and he just changed the subject real quick. Like, who the hell built the, I you know, the ISS station? Not only that, but you were talking about the vacuum of space. Yeah. I was reading something up today that there supposedly there was a a, a, a hole in the space station one time and they ended up cl uh, closing it up with something. I don't know what the hell they closed it up with. Oh, like, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. And and, and I remember that because the hole in the space station, you can look this up, by the way, because um, we, yeah. we pointed this out right away. Chris Hatfield tweeted the hole in the space station. And yeah. the internet's really good about finding stuff. And they found that, that the hole that he used was the album cover for a Christian rock band from like 10 <laughs> years earlier. Yeah. And and that and that and the Christian rock band grabbed it from a NASA image that was 15 years before that. It's like Hatfield, you ass. It's like, what are you thinking? It's like, it's yeah. Least, it, well, why would like doesn't that just right there just blow it out of the water? It's like what there's oh, a yeah. hole. Like that you would be dead. You'd be dead. <laughs> well, again, most people be, they, would implode. they go with the movie stuff, which is you know they see a hole. It's like oh, again, we only got two minutes of air left. Here's and, bubble gum. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> or or the thing by the way, I've got to mention Joe Rogan real quick because Joe Rogan is the only person in the history of conspiracies that doesn't believe in conspiracies anymore. But he <laughs> still, I think, in his heart. Because Alex, Alex Jones said that, that Rogan was compromised some years ago. Yeah. Which is yeah, why he has one that. of the best or the most popular podcasts in, oh, yeah. in the country. Sure. And But Joe Rogan was the guy, you know, years ago. I mean, he, 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 he went after NASA and he, with great conviction and he was fun to listen to. And then mm -hmm. he, he all of a sudden went off the air Flip for the like switch. a year and comes back. And lo and behold, he had a brand new show on the Sci-Fi channel called Joe Rogan Questions Everything. And the very first episode, he apologized and recanted for anything bad he ever said about NASA. It's like, oh, like okay. When he has Eddie Bravo on. Eddie Bravo, who, who he doesn't even let him talk when he's getting into Flat Earth and, you know, all, all, the, all these crazy conspiracies. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Eddie, he, uh, uh, Rogan knows. Rogan was clever, though. He brings it up as many times as he can. Yeah. But he still has <laughs> obligations to where he can't, he will never be able to endorse it. But yeah, he he'll like he'll bring Eddie on and, and let him let him talk about it. And I'm glad Eddie, you know, he's with us. Uh, yeah. I was hoping he would go to so, the Dallas conference, but we'll get we'll get him eventually. I want to wrap up with this last question, yeah. and, and we can end on this note. Uh, how obviously you're into this whole community. You're you're pretty big in the community of, of flat Earth. Yeah. Like, and you, you called yourself the freshman recruiter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you had the Netflix documentary, which I know you guys had nothing to do with it, but it made it look. It made you guys look bad at the end, something weird, but yeah, that's a whole another. That's you know, a whole another thing. Tangent. How how are you able, or how have you dealt with the negative feedback and the you know the dogma that just comes associated with this whole idea? Because again, we talked about at the beginning how people attack you. How have, how are you? Do you do something in specific that you're able to deal with this? Is there a certain mindset? Yeah. How? Yeah, How? yeah, yeah. There is, and and you're right. People get really, really bent out of shape, and and the first reaction again, the five stages of acceptance. It's denial followed immediately by anger, uh, and it's because of the conditioning. But I can't get mad because 
I was, you know, I, I tell people, I go, I can't get mad at you or whoever it is. It's like, why didn't you yell at that guy? Because I was that guy. Because back in 2014, I was right there. I was, uh, I was absolutely, you know, I, I remember physically being embarrassed by even clicking on my first flat Earth video. Physically flushed. I, I mean, I, I actually turned red, and I caught myself. It's like, why am I getting embarrassed? I mean, God sakes. I mean, I'm old enough. I've seen a lot of weird stuff on the internet. <laughs> a lot of naked people that you shouldn't be, you know, anywhere near. <laughs> and this was was not that. And so. I became, you know, I, I, it, it's hypocritical for me. I can't yell at people. I can't be mean and, and say, look, you know, why are you yelling at me? You're being, you know, all, all the hate because I know why they're, I know exactly why they're, they're getting bent out of shape. In fact, it's something I, I wrote about, I think in the first book, which I said, if you don't have an adverse reaction to flat earth in the first 20 minutes, there's probably something wrong with you. You're a reptilian. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> you ev- know the truth. <laughs> everybody braces against it, and and why wouldn't they? I mean, you're you're basically telling people again. It's it's like walking up to somebody and saying, "Oh yeah, by the way, I'm 99 percent sure you're adopted." You know, and the more you say it, the more angry they get. <laughs> Until uh, finally, you know, all of a sudden it's like, "Oh wait, where were the, who were those people at the doorstep?" You know, when I was really really young. So yeah, no, I, I can't get mad. Can't, can't do it. Um, I, you know, I try to set a good example and, uh, you know, I just try to stay the course and, and die. I, I, you put up enough positive energy up front and people will generally know, you know, the, the big key for, for me is not to get defensive right away, not to dig in my heels and start, you know, snapping back. Um, you know, if they take personal shots, sure. You know, I might, I might take a couple swings here and there. But the re- most other people are, are, you know, nice. As long as you hold to your convictions and, and you believe it, and I do, uh, then, you know, I, things will tend, have tended to work out fine. Right on, Mark. Are you a reptilian by any chance? <laughs> uh, I was trying to think of something clever that would make you sound... You signed an s- a, a, a NDA. You can't disclose Yeah, it. You exactly. Can't, no further comment. Wait, you're not recording this, are you? No, 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 reptilian. No, no, are could there be reptilians out there? Sure, maybe. Uh, I am not one of them, nor am I. Um, because people have said, oh, you know, you're obviously a government agent. It's like if I am, I am the greatest secret agent of all time. Uh, and I am not anyone that meets meets me in person for five minutes. Like, oh my god, he's a big dork. It's like I am. Yeah. So, so Mark. Thank you again so much for coming on, man. I had a great time. Yeah. Uh, I didn't ask you at the beginning, what? but I always do um, uh, to put to plug in your information if people want to reach out to you or they want to read your books, uh, your YouTube channel, so you can plug that in. And oh yeah, can look yeah. More and going um, more into the wormhole. A flat, just you know what? There's so much content from so many great people. Don't focus on necessarily on my stuff. Um, to to get to my stuff directly, just type in Flat Earth Clues. Um, if you type Flat Earth into YouTube, you're going to get a whole bunch of mainstream channels right off the bat. Um, Flat Earth Clues will get you, if you just Google Flat Earth Clues, you'll get to a lot of stuff. Um, and I've got playlists on my YouTube channel with all sorts of other creators. I mean, we've got wonderful content makers from everywhere. And there's a lot of a lot of great stuff out there. The book is called Flat Earth um, Clues. You know, there's, there's Sky's the Limit, End of the World. Those are on Amazon. The documentary is called Behind the Curve. And uh, yeah. It's it's a wonderful journey. I'm I'm just humbled to be a part of it. Thank you so much, Mark. You've been uh, a a cool guy, great guest, and I really had a lot of fun with this episode, man. Thanks. Thank you for being on, Mark. All right. All right, Mark. Yeah, that was uh, that was great, man. Cool. Well, I'm glad glad to help in any way, shape, or form. Um, what what is is the podcast called? Juan to Juan, or Juan on uh, the Juan on Juan podcast? Okay. My name is Juan. <laughs> I, I figured and I'm that. Hispanic, <laughs> so I have that privilege. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Really, really great. Yeah. All right. Uh, but yeah, man. Anytime you want to come on, man, talk flat Earth or some other crap, we can get into the space stuff because that's also a wormhole in itself. Okay. You know, you're always welcome. Cool. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you very much. And if you need any other resources, just let me know. Thank you, Mark. All right. Have a good have one. A good day, man. All right. Bye bye.